people often say to me, just be grateful you don't have to have hearing aids as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to you all as we come together for our Mass today, the Tuesday of the 27th week in Ordinary Time. And it's a day of oh, a degree of celebration for us here at St Simon's. And welcome to you all, whether you live in Roville or Listerfield or whether you're part of our virtual parish community further afield. But today is something a bit special because you may not be able to see it now, but you can see it in a moment. We produced this 50 Masses ago when we reached our century. But here we have the bat, <laughs> the virtual mass bat, to recognise our 150th. So we intend to keep things going and hopefully that's a help to everyone who's part of this mass and a number of people who've said going to daily mass was something that they had wished they could do over the years and now they are able to do that but work and other commitments prohibited them from doing that but here they can be part of this Mass at any time of the day. So we ask the Lord's help and strength and guidance in everything that we do and we pause for a moment asking God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and our sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, in the abundance of your kindness, you exceed the merits and desires of all who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us and pardon what our conscience fears and give us what we need. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. You must have heard of my career as a practicing Jew, how merciless I was in persecuting the Church of God, how much damage I did to it, how I stood out among other Jews of my generation, and how enthusiastic I was for the tradition of my ancestors. Then God, who had specially chosen me while I was still in my mother's womb, called me through his grace and chose to reveal his son in me so that I might preach the good news about him to the pagans. I did not stop to discuss this with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were already apostles before me. But I went off to Arabia at once and later went straight back from there to Damascus. Even when, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cyphus and stayed with him for 15 days, I did not see any of the other apostles. I only saw James, the brother of the Lord, and I swear before God what I have just written is the literal truth. After that, I went to Syria and Cilicia and was still not known by sight to the churches of Christ in Judea, who had heard nothing except that their one-time persecutor was now preaching the faith he had previously tried to destroy, and they gave glory to God for me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O Lord, you search me and you know me. 
You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. All my ways lie open to you. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. For it was you who created my being. Knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for the wonder of my being, for the wonders of all your creation. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Already you knew my soul. My body held no secret from you. When I was being fashioned in secret and moulded in the depths of the earth. Guide me, O Lord, along the everlasting way. The Gospel acclamation, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who sat down at the Lord's feet and listened to him speaking. Now Martha, who was distracted with all the serving, said, Lord, do you not care that my sister is leaving me to do the serving all by myself? Please tell her to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, he said, you worry and fret about so many things, and yet few are needed, indeed only one. It is Mary who has chosen the better part. It is not to be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I imagine many of us have had discussions about the varying impacts of the COVID-related shutdowns and isolation and five-kilometre limits and where you can go and where you can't go and who you can see and who you can't see. And particularly within the context of family unit, the difference that that is making, especially for extended family members who might live a bit further afield. And I was talking to someone recently who said that family had welcomed a new child into the world in March. And as a result of the lockdowns most of the time, that little baby, who would now be but we're now in the 10th month, so eight months old, has rarely seen another child. And because it's the eldest and the only child at the moment, the only people that that little child sees in the main are the parents, not even the grandparents. And the discussion that we had was around, well, what happens in those circumstances because the whole nature of who we are as social beings is being interrupted. I mean, that sort of thing might have happened, I suppose. Babies born in Antarctica or somewhere like that with no sort of interaction. But you wonder when those first lessons that we learn in life about others and how we fit in and how we all have a role to play, all those things are learnt and absorbed really quite early in the course of our life. One of the things we do know, of course, is that built into us, there can be a sense of rivalry, competition. I can do anything better than you can. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. You might remember that old song from, what was it? And you get your gun, I think was... <laughs> It's a musical. We might even find a little clip of that if we look hard for it. But rivalry, not just among siblings, but rivalry in a classroom when we go to school, in a kindergarten, in a workplace, in a team sport. The sense of, I can do this better, or you can do this better, I know, and I'm jealous of you because of that. It's just part and parcel sadly, of who we are and sort of how we operate. So 
and something we have to deal with. This little story of Mary and Martha is a fascinating one. Jesus goes to visit his friends and he's invited for afternoon tea, so to speak. Might have been morning tea, who knows? The scones and cakes and, and jams coming out. And Mary, we know, is sitting, listening to Jesus and there may well have been other people around. We're not told all the specific details. But Martha is out doing all the work and she is not happy about all this and ends up complaining. There's lots of different lessons and elements in all of this, but let's just look at the whole sense of competition. The reality is, of course, that Mary was not necessarily working in the work sense of the word, but she had a role to play which is a very important role. And that was the role of hospitality, not in the sense of getting the coffee and the scones and cakes and jam. It was in the sense of paying attention to the guest, which was important. That's, I'm sure we've had circumstances where we've gone to visit someone. I certainly have. I'm sure no one watching this, but I've gone to visit someone and somebody goes out to get a coffee or something like that and the coffee machine's playing up so they come back get the other one. Oh, the coffee machine's not working. So I'm just sitting there. This could go on for 10 minutes because the coffee machine is very hard to fix, etc. And you think, well, this is a bit of a waste of time all around, so you get out the phone and read the news. Well, that's not happening all the time, of course, but it does happen from time to time. The point is that in Mary and Martha, there are different roles that we play, and we need to appreciate that not everyone makes a contribution to society, even the society of the family, in the same way. But it's a contribution nonetheless, and we need to be able to recognise that we all have different roles to play. And sure, we've got some people who govern the country or the state or whatever. We've got other people that pick up the rubbish. We need them both. We need them all. We need different people to do different things. You might have a skilled surgeon in an operating theatre, but if the person that cleaned the theatre before the operation took place hasn't done their job properly, well, the life of the patient could be in danger from infection. And so it goes. We all have our role to play. So let's ask that we can appreciate the role to which we are called and ask that we may be able to fulfill that in the very best way possible and recognise that jealousy and rivalry, rivalry can on occasions be, if it's good natured, can be productive, but for the most part, it's something which doesn't do a great deal for us. We all have something to do. Let's do it in the best way possible, putting our best foot forward. Our prayers of intercession help us to realise that our troubles are slight and short-lived. They are as nothing compared with the joy we shall have when we reach our home with you. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Come to the lonely, the unloved, those without friends. Show them your love and help them to care for their brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Take away our pride, temper our anger. May we follow you in your gentleness. May you make us humble of heart. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, increase in us your gift of faith, so that the praise we offer you may ever yield its fruit from heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We ask you to receive us and please for the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, accept the sacrifices instituted by your commands through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service. May you graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of hosts, hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now wherever we are, whoever we're with, as best we can, socially distance, of course, we offer each other a sign of peace and friendship in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on, us. on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us, us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we're very much aware, the little spiritual communion prayer, which somebody asked last week, where did that come from? And as Tevia the milkman and Fiddler on the Roof would say, I'll tell you, I don't know. <laughs> so I have no idea where it comes from, but it's being used all over the world. It's a beautiful prayer that really unites us with that sense of the Lord's presence in the Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, grant that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we have received. May we be transformed into what we consume. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before we conclude, I'm not going to wave the, well maybe I can, wave the bat around for the 150th and we look forward to being able to continue with providing many people in different places with the Mass each day. Certainly, let's hope that when we get to 200, we'll be in a much different position in terms of our capacity to worship in person and that many other areas of lockdown and restrictions will have been eased for all the right reasons, of course. It's not just a matter of the restrictions being eased. It's also a fact that perhaps the situation has altered and we're doing a lot better all around health-wise and every other way. But along with that, in recognising the masses that have been put on our website, most of which are still available to you, if you wish, under previous mass videos on the website, just a word of thanks to Peter especially, and I think it's, it's his cricket bat actually that I've just been brandishing, and a cricket enthusiast from South Australia, a great cricketing state, and as he is, but also Julie, who's also behind the camera from time to time, and our readers, and Abby and Loretta and others who assist on every different way to make this possible. Certainly our intention, a number of people have asked, will this continue as it's possible to bring more people back into the church? And certainly our intention is, as much as possible, it will be, because it's a great service which brings a lot of people able to share in the Mass who might not otherwise be able to do so. So you know, it's a new and different world into which we're going to be emerging over the next few months. So our thanks to all who have made this possible for 150 and we'll press on to the double century. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.